Good morning and welcome to Sunday School with the Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Troy Roland, and today we are going to be talking about freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. Before we begin, let's start off with the word of prayer. Oh, most precious, loving, and heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for your presence on this day, Lord. We thank you, Father, for freeing us from sin. And we're asking you right now, Father, to free us from the things that cloud our minds, Father, the things that clog our ears, Lord, and keep us from wanting to hear or understand or learn your word, Father. May you free us from our daily stresses and open our minds, Father, and our hearts and our souls to the power of your Holy Spirit, Father, in your wisdom. May we be able to grasp, understand, and hear and use your word when you call for us to do it. It's in Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen, amen, and amen. Freedom from sin. If you like these videos, of course, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss any of them. I'm going to start by reading the end focus. And it's, it's interesting today. <laughs> the end focus reads as follows. Reverend Monica Jackson was recently ordained and senior pastor Clay Gosberry wasted no time putting her to work. One of the assignments she was given was baptism ministry leader. She thought she would be excited about it to do it, but on baptism day, her mood was more reflective. There were 12 people who were going to be baptized, including her cousin Raven, whom she once ran the streets with. As Reverend Jackson filled the pool with water, she thought about how God delivered her from recruiting young girls like Raven to be in her gang to evangelizing on the streets and winning souls for Christ. As Monica put on a robe, she thought about the time on a dare. She went into a church drunk and received a life-changing prayer at the altar. Once the baptisms began, she and Minister Paul Diaz took Raven's hand as she stepped into the pool. As Raven shared a testimony, Reverend Jackson remembered how God gave her the courage to sever ties with a married man she once thought she couldn't live without. Based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, said Reverend Gosberry, as Reverend Jackson and Minister Diaz baptized Raven and the other candidates. Once all 12 were baptized, Reverend Jackson asked Reverend Gooseberry if, Gosberry, <laughs> if she could lead the new believers class. I'd like to continue to remind myself and others that God has set us free and we never have to turn back, said Reverend Jackson. The question for today says, what has God delivered you from? When you are tempted to turn back to your old ways. How do you fight against it? Hmm. Read those again. What has God delivered you from? And the other question. When you are tempted to turn back to your old ways, how do you fight against it? Hmm. As I said before, today we are coming from the book of Romans. We are in chapter 6. Romans is one of those books that I found a lot of difficulty in reading. Uh, Paul is very, hmm, he's a very intelligent man, very, very learned. He, he read a lot and he, it appears to me that he was also very sarcastic. So when you read chapter seven, you have to take that into consideration. And chapter six is a, 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 a building up to that, a leading up to it. So you gotta, gotta read it too. And, and, and take it as kind of a, take it with a little bit of sarcasm. How about that? <clears throat> so we're here in the book of Romans. We're going to start at chapter 1, and we are going down to verse 14. Verse 1 through verses 14, chapter 1. Chapter 6, Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 14. There we go. I'm going to say it right eventually, one of these days. <laughs> Just not today, it looks like. Uh, Romans, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Romans 6, 1. It says, well then. Should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more of his wonderful grace? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I'm giggling again. Because, like I said, it, it, you have to take it with a little bit of sarcasm. 
Because if nothing else, that statement is extremely sarcastic. <laughs> well then, should we just keep on sending so God can show us his grace again? And if if no one's ever explained grace to you, uh, maybe someone doesn't get it. But grace is God giving us what we don't deserve in spite of who and what we are. Us being sinners. We're, we're born into the sinful flesh. So we don't deserve anything that God gives us. He He tells us in the Old Testament that we're to die for sins. So for us not to die, we have to receive his grace. Mm, think about that. His grace is the only reason why we're allowed to live an eternal life, to get past our sinful selves. Even though we're caught and stuck in sin, we're still allowed and given the grace of God in order to continue in, those li in our lives and to continue our lives in the realm that he decides to put us in well, in the realm that we will be in, us as Christians, <laughs> when we leave this earth. <laughs> grace is wonderful grace. Verse two, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Once we're baptized and we're put into the water, to signify the, the death of Christ and being placed into darkness and rising again from that water, from that, from that watery grave where we are become like Jesus. And I get it that baptism is a profession of faith and an outward showing of that profession of faith. But the one thing you have to understand is it's to signify the death of Jesus. So we, we die with him and we rise again. So we're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when we come up out of the water, we are new creatures. We are born again. <laughs> Verse 3. Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? See? Baptism, joining Christ. Verse 4. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, we also may live new lives. Hmm. Isn't that awesome? Because we accept Jesus, because we're baptized, because we, 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 we understand God's grace has been placed upon us. Because we understand and we know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And he was raised after the third day and now sits at the right hand of God. Praying on our behalf. Because we understand these things and we accept them, we are now children of God. Hmm. <laughs> and we live new lives. All things have become new. Behold, all the old things have been taken away. <laughs> Verse 5. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. Let me, let me read that again. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. You understand that? Did you get that? Because we experienced the death as, as Jesus Christ would have us experience it here on this earth, we will be raised with him just like he was. So when Jesus tells us he's coming back to receive us unto him again, we're going to be raised. For those of us who, who, who die before his return, we're going to be raised. <laughs> we're going to live forever. And, and, and just, just, just a little side note. <laughs> and this, this is something, I don't know. When I I, I I try my best to explain this as, as, as best I can. And I know I, sometimes I miss the boat. But you know when you go to sleep at night, especially when you're a child, I, I can I can admit now that I don't sleep too well. You know, as you get older you you start to fall into all these crazy things, you don't sleep too good anymore at night. Yeah, I know, I'm old. But uh when you're a child and you sleep and it's it's like Christmas Eve. How about that? Christmas Eve is a child. When you finally do fall asleep, it's like you fall asleep and poof, you wake up and there's a new day. 
and it's Christmas Day. Or when you fall asleep and you're expecting something awesome to happen the following day and you're excited as a child when you go, when your parents tell you, well, go to sleep so when you wake up, it'll be time. You know, you fall asleep and you wake up <laughs> and it's like a, and it's that new day. Well, those of us who die in Christ, Jesus says, even when he, 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 he returns a young lady back to life, the young girl, and some people call her Talitha, but it means something totally different. But uh, <laughs> when he says Talitha Kumi, young woman rise, young girl rise, she, he says that she was sleeping. She wasn't dead. She was sleeping. And now he tells her to rise and get up. So to her, I don't know what it was. And I can't say that, that I've got it absolutely right. But I believe that when we fall asleep or here on this earth, when we, when we die here on this earth, we're going to get up. We're going to get up. If we die before Christ's return, we're going to get up. And to us, I don't, those of us who died, I don't think it's going to be like we're going to be sitting down and watching the, you know, the roots grow through the ground and waiting around twiddling our fingers and just waiting for the next day, you know, day after day, year after year, month, however long it takes Jesus to come back. And we're all praying that he comes back soon. We're not going to be sitting there in the dark. It's going to be a, <laughs> and you're going to get up because those who die in Christ are going to get up. That's what I just read, didn't it? We will also be raised to life as he was. Hmm. Verse 6, let me move on. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Uh, I've argued this point with several people who say that they're not slaves to sin. Let me, let me tell you something. If... You're in a sinful disposition and you find yourself sinning over and over and over again and you haven't accepted the gift from God. And those of you who are who are new Christians, I totally get it. You're still fighting with your sins. You're still fighting all over. I still fight with mine. <laughs> I, I am not perfect. I would never claim to be perfect. There was only one perfect man who ever walked upon this earth and his name is Jesus. So and no man can claim perfection. And if he can, that's a, yeah, they can't do it. <laughs> I ain't even going to get that. They ain't going to do it. So I, I, I look at that and I, I, I see that when you're in sin, you continuously fall over and over and over and over and over into it again. Then you are a slave to it. It, people say, well, I can stop smoking anytime. No, 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 no. I can stop drinking anytime. Y yeah. You know, those, those cessation activities, those, those, those activities, those, those people, those groups that you go to to actually stop doing something that nine times out of 10, they, they mix faith in it because faith gets you through. God will get you through those things that hold you to sin. If you pray and you ask him to let you go. So when you pray and you ask him to let you go and then you're baptized and you profess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and, and God releases you from that sin, it may not happen immediately. It may not happen that day. Some people it does, but it may not happen right off the bat. It may take you years to get past it. But when you recognize that you can go to God and you can pray and ask him to give you the strength to make it, you might go from, I remember the old joke about the man who cursed a thousand times every day. And then, you know, once he's, he's, he's baptized, once he claims he accepts Jesus Christ in his life and he, he claims the blood of Jesus Christ on him and, and receives his cleansing, he gets all excited and he comes back to the pastor and he tells the pastor and he says, hey, pastor, I am so excited. Do you know what? And the pastor says, what? So instead of him cursing a thousand times a day, he says, I only curse 999 times a day today. <laughs> so it, it may come back to you slowly, but it will get to you. It will, you, you will overcome your sins. 
You will overcome, especially the strong ones. You can overcome them as long as you rely on the power of Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to him in prayer. Go to God in prayer and ask him to relieve you of those things and you will be relieved. Hmm. Verse 7. But when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Ah, and the truth shall set you free. <laughs> Verse 8. And since we died with Christ... We know we will also live with him. Get that. I'll put those two together. Listen to this. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. You see, you're going to live eternally. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be baptized. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I sometimes tell people, if, if you're not in a position to be baptized, I can understand that, you know, because you might be in a foxhole in the middle of a battle somewhere, or you might be in a place where you just, you, you just can't be baptized, but you need to accept Jesus Christ in your life. You can be baptized later to show that outward profession, to show it, to accept it. But you need to accept Jesus Christ today. You don't have to wait to be baptized, but you need to be, ex you need to accept Jesus Christ today. You need to have your name written in that book of life. Hmm. Verse nine. And we are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. That's self-explanatory. <laughs> he only did it once and, and he didn't have to do it. At any point in time, Jesus could have just walked away and said, nope, this is not for me. But he did it for love, for the love of us, because he loves us. He did that for us. Mm -mm. <laughs> Woo. So when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. Verse 10. <laughs> Verse 11. So you should, you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. I'm going to read 10 and 11 again because I want you to hear those two together. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you should, you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Verse 12. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Hmm. If, if there was ever a command given, that's one for you. <laughs> Don't let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Pray. And I know some people will say, well, that's so easy for you to say, Rep. No, 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 no. It's hard. It's hard. But you know, anything that you go through in life, anything that's just been given to you, anything that was just passed on to you through life, you really don't have a lot of regard for. <laughs> Think of a child when you give them a toy. When you just give it to them, Nine times out of ten, that toy does not last through the day. How many toys are broken on Christmas Day? Just think about that for a minute. How many toys are broken on Christmas Day? <laughs> Your parents spend all that money on toys and all that stuff, and then you give it to the child, and the child destroys it. <laughs> but when you have a child do chores around the house, and they earn an allowance, and they get to save that money. When they go out and buy something with that money, they, they consider that money their own, and they had to work for it. How much more does it mean to them? You see, if, if, if God walked around and took every sin away from you, took every sin out of your life, without showing you, without allowing you to, to experience the fullness of life, then we'd walk around here and not have any need for them. I love what is it that the many times that, 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 <laughs> oh, wow, I'm, 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 I'm forgetting. 
the many times that I've had to go through things in my life and then realize that when I went through those things, it was the times that I prayed to get through them that are the most significant in my life. Anytime that I just prayed once for something and then God just gave it to me, I've, I've forgotten a lot of those. But the times that I had to get on my knees, the times that I've fallen on my face, the, the times that I've shed tears calling and crying out to God, the times that I know that I've wrenched at his heart, those are the times and the things that I remember that I've come through because of him. So, when that temptation comes and hits you, you start praying like that. You start calling on the name of God. You start calling on the power of the Holy Spirit. When you start calling like that, when you start asking God, when you start begging God, when you're down on your knees and, 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 and everything is just hitting you all at one time, when those things come to you and they try to bring you down and you call upon the power of God to stand you back up, those are the times that you will remember having defeated sin. <laughs> Those are the times that you remember. Mm. So don't give in. Don't give up. Just pray. Verse 13. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Self-explanatory. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. I don't even need to say anything about that. <laughs> use all of me. Why not take all? Let me quit. Uh, <laughs> verse 14. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under requirements, under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. I love that. Sin no longer is your master, for you no longer live under the requirement under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Mm. Isn't that wonderful to be free? Just to, to live under God's grace. To 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 to, to receive that. That, that undeserved love and favor on your life because there's nothing, nothing that we do that is truly deserving of God's grace and yet he gives it to us anyway. He gave it to us before we even asked for it. He gave it to us before we even knew what it was. He gave it to us. All we need to do is accept it. <laughs> I've gone on too long. So I'm going to close this one out. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, most loving heavenly God, we thank you, Lord, for having showed us, Father, and taught us about your grace. By having showed us, Father, that we are now dead to sin, Father, that that, that we can live the life that you have set before us, Father, that, that when we feel that sin and that temptation come to crawl back upon us, Father, we can call upon your name and glory, and we can receive the blessing of your Holy Spirit, Father. We can once again receive the grace that you have placed upon this earth for us to receive. Dear loving Father, we thank you ever so much for the, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, Father. And we're thanking him, Father, on this day for, for having stayed on the cross, Father, having stayed in the grave for those three days, having defeated death, Father, and sin, and rose from that grave, Father, on that third day, Father. And now he sits at your right hand. So we are thankful, Lord. We are thankful for your love, your grace, and your understanding. Father, we love you and we thank you ever so much for always loving on us. It is in Jesus' name, Father, we pray for the service on this day, Lord, and we pray that you will be with all people in all churches everywhere, Father, everywhere, Father, as we hear and learn and, and, and understand, Father, and share in your word. It is in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray also that you might bless all those delivering sermons on this day, that you might bless every pastor, every minister, Father, every speaker on this day. That we all might, Father, receive a, a peace of your Holy Spirit upon our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our lives. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray and we thank you. Amen, 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 and amen. 
And as always, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And I will see you next week. God bless you. God keep you. And God love you always. Bye-bye.